Good afternoon, welcome. Thanks for joining us on, uh, on Facebook. Uh, we're about to start today's Ask the Physio session. Age old question today, should I heat or ice my injury? We'll get to that uh, shortly. Just getting my Zoom meeting set up here. Um, uh, yes, please, yes, if we can just yet yeah, have audio muted, that would be, uh, that would be great. It just stops the feedback when we don't need it. Okay, that's working. All right, at least my camera's working today. I'll fix that, uh, fix that glitch. Um, so hopefully you can all um, see me okay there. All right, let me bring up my screen. So thanks for joining in again today. Um, should I heat or ice is the, uh, is the, is the topic of, of today's, uh, today's presentation. Ask the physio. We've got a number of questions. We'll get to those. Uh, get to those shortly. But I guess one of the common questions we're actually asked as physios is, well, "I've hurt myself, but what do I do? What's the immediate management of my injury, and what is the best thing to do in the early stages?" Um, and that's what we want to cover off on today. So by the end of the day, you should be should be super clear on what is the best way to manage those acute injuries. I'll we'll just let, uh, yes, I'll let you in, there you go. Um, thanks Lydia, thanks for joining us. So the, um, the acute management of injuries is super important. You know, the, the management within the first two or three days um, or hours even of an injury is super, super important. And it can actually really um, shape the way that injury um, progresses. Um, and how quickly we recover from an injury um, can really be shaped in those in those vital first first few hours and, and, and days. And that's where this question of do I heat it or ice it is, is super, super important. And it actually makes a really, really big difference if we get that right in the early stages. So that's what I want to clear up today about well, what is the best thing to do. And as we'll find out, it may depend on what you've done, it will depend on the best plan of attack to get that injury to settle down. Obviously, if we can get the injury to settle down quickly, then we can return to doing what we love a lot quicker. Um, and for most people, that is their, my, their primary motivation, is well, I just wanna get back to doing X, Y, Z, whether it be running marathons, swimming at the Olympics, doing online physio classes, or it's simply taking the dogs for a walk. So that's, uh, that's the objective, get us back to doing what we, uh, what we love. So let's have a look, I'm just gonna share my screen, we'll open up my, uh, my presentation. There it is, this technology, I'll tell you what, we're all becoming uh, a little bit more expert on this, hopefully this is coming, uh, coming across. If we go full screen, then uh, hopefully we can see that, see that okay. Apologies on Facebook, you won't be able to see my screen, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll talk you through it anyway. Um, okay, so this is our Thursday 3 p.m. session. Uh, Ask the Physio, um, really been getting some great feedback, happy to help out, we're answering questions, we're providing information in these sessions um, along common things that we, uh, that we see in the physio clinic, um, and we're taking questions and giving people advice um, online anonymously or some people are, are, are jumping on with us. Why ask the physio sessions? We've outlined this before, it's super important. Live video has never been more important. We're finding it really useful for us to stay in contact with our, with our clients uh, over, over live video. And we're using it for exercise classes, we're using it for consultations, we're um, talking to our clients online in, 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 in video. Um, so it's never been more important to us um, as, a, as a physiotherapy practice. It's a chance for us to stay connected with our clients and that's super important. Our business is about staying connected with the people that we help and it's a really offering us a great chance to be able to, to, to stay connected. In these particular sessions or online, so the ability for people to ask questions uh, live, real time, um, or via email, um, Facebook messages, um, SMS, whatever way they want to ask us a question, we, will, uh, we don't mind. And often we find that we cover topics such as the one we're uh, covering today is that people 
either have that issue or they know someone with that issue. And we've found some, um, some great information, particularly up on our Facebook pages. People have re-watched the video and sent it to someone uh, because it's been a topic that they have, uh, they've know that their friend or their family have been uh, wanting an answer to. So that's our, our, our online sessions. We're finding them really important. What are we seeing at the moment? Okay, so the topic this week is, is around, as I said, managing acute injuries. We've seen probably more this week than we have in the last month as people are continuing to exercise or finding new ways to exercise. We're finding we're seeing a few, a few acute injuries happening. By acute, I mean injuries that, that haven't really been around before with someone and suddenly something's popped up that is quite sore. And the definition of acute is that it will be quite sore and it, and it won't have a long history to it. It may be a day old, two days old, a week old. They're acute injuries. And we see them from you know, the same day, for maybe a week, but these injuries can still be acute versus a long-term or persistent injury. So time is crucial with these, with these injuries. And as I said, the main question we get asked is, well, do I heat it or do I ice it? I don't know, which one, which one do I do? And there's certain things as physios that we look at that help us determine, well, what is the best course of treatment? What's the best acute management? Um, and as I said, if we get the acute management right, then we often find that the long-term gain or improvement is much more rapid and people are back doing what they, what they enjoy. And it's interesting as we see working in professional sport, people are often bamboozled by the fact that, that, that professional sports people can seemingly recover so quickly from injury. And they come in going, well, I want to do what XYZ player did because he got back so quick that I couldn't believe it. And really, the big difference often is that acute management of the injury. Where an elite sports person, often we're getting the right advice immediately as things happen and we're in no doubt of, of what they should be doing. So getting that right advice and treatment initially is super, super important. And as I said in the intro, that shapes the way that injury will, um, will progress and often it means that we, um, we see things coming back a lot quicker. Hey Rory, give us a thumbs up. This will apply to you, many an acute injury in your, uh, in your footballing career. Mostly wish you for great advice and we're back out there doing what you loved quickly. So thanks for tuning in. Um, so time is crucial, right? If someone comes into the physio clinic and they've had this sprained ankle for a week and they've been hobbling around on it, then they're likely going to take longer to get better than the person that has sought the advice that day or as quickly as they, as they could. So time is crucial and as I said, those first few hours, few days are really important with acute injuries, okay? All right, so I'm injured, what do I do? And that's why, why we're here, we're here to give, give that advice and make sure people are super clear on, on what they need to do immediately. On my graphic on the, uh, on the PowerPoint there, we've got a heat pack, so I'm putting a heat pack on a neck versus someone putting an ice bag on an ankle. And they are two common injuries that we'll see, and they are two that we potentially will be give uh, different, different advice. G'day Max, thanks for tuning in, give us a thumbs up. Uh, hopefully you're in training at the moment and not injured and staying fit and healthy. Um, so I'm injured, what, what do I do? So let's just go through, before we, we look at that, let's go through what does acute injury management involve? Again, those that can't see my screen, we've got uh, a, list of, a list of things up, up there at the moment. As I said at the top, so time is crucial. The first 72 hours is really important. So the first three days is super important. What we do in that time really does shape the progress of that, of that injury. We can make it better, we can improve things, we can do things that make it worse in that first 72, 72 hours of the acute injury. We want to be reducing inflammation and swelling. Now some injuries, we'll see immediate inflammation, immediate signs of swelling. If I go back to my previous slide, we've got that nice bruised ankle. That ankle's going to be swollen, that bruising will, will come out over the first few days, but there's going to be immediate signs of swelling and inflammation. The other injury around the neck, well, we, we won't see swelling and inflammation around the, around the neck so much. Okay, so different injuries, 
we have inflammation and swelling. Some injuries, the next point down, we might see more, um, more muscle spasm. So it might be more related to muscle spasm. Okay, and again, we find heat is more beneficial there. We'll go into this in a minute. Limiting movements that aggravate is super important as well. We'll come back to that and immobilize as, as required. All right, let's just go on to that first one there about reducing inflammation and swelling. So we're talking about ice here. So ice will reduce inflammation and swelling. There's a lot of literature over, over ice and do we bother using it and do we find it helpful? Yes, we do find it helpful and yes, we should bother using it is absolutely my opinion. But there comes a time when we probably don't need to continue to ice something. But when we're in this acute phase of inflammation and swelling, we definitely need to be, need to be using, using ice. Now it may depend on the injury. So basically, like I've said in that previous slide, ice is really helpful for inflammation and swelling. So any injury where we have acute inflammation and swelling, ice is super, super important. And this is where ice will have its, have its greatest effect. Have a look at those. I've got a picture, a number of half a dozen pictures up there on my, on my screen at the moment. And they're different injuries. We've got an ankle, we've got a knee, ankle, knee. So we think of ankles and knees probably as being, you know, injuries that we can ice. But we could put lots of other ones, elbow injuries, hand, finger, wrist. There's lots of injuries that, that occur um, that produce pain and swelling. It might be a direct blow. So I might be playing cricket and get a direct blow to the forearm with a cricket ball traveling at a great speed. That's going to create inflammation and swelling. So ice is super important for that. All right, someone might be playing, playing tennis, step and twist their ankle, and then you know, there is going to be inflammation and swelling around that ankle. So ice is used for injuries which there is inflammation and swelling. Sometimes it may be more evident than others. If anyone's had a, an injured shoulder, or know someone that has an injured shoulder, maybe we don't see inflammation as much in the shoulder, and there's reasons anatomically that, that we don't see inflammation as much in, in, in the shoulder. So looking at that inflammation is important, or that type of injury, that's, uh, that's super important. G'day James, thanks for tuning in. This guy knows what he's talking about. Um, now, so ice, for inflammation is generally the way that I tell people that that's the easy way to remember it. All right, so let's just talk more about ice and how do we apply ice? Here's the thing, I went to uni for a long time, I got lots of, lots of degrees, well they're not hanging on my wall at the moment, I've got my beloved rugby picture and my plant, but I went to uni for a long time to teach people how to, how to apply ice um, because it's done poorly, let's face it. I think most people apply ice really poorly and what they're actually doing <clears throat> is not achieving what they want it to be doing. So I'm just gonna check the question there come in. Um, so applying ice. On my screen, those of you that can see it, those of you that can't, I've got a number of different scenarios. One, we have person on the, the, the top corner up here. He's got a handful of ice cubes applying it to clearly a, a sore and swollen ankle. G'day Geordie, thanks for tuning in. Give us a thumbs up. You've uh, applied ice to lots of different acute injuries. So this person's applying a handful of ice to that injury. Absolute waste of time, I'll go as far as saying. One, their hand's gonna go numb and they'll let that ice go very quickly. And two, that's gonna drip everywhere, it's gonna leak everywhere, and they're not gonna have any real great effect from applying that ice. Probably better than doing nothing with it, but it's not, not much better. Next one I have here is, a, is someone applying ice to a, a, a sore knee. They've got the old plastic bag of ice given to them by their sports trainer probably beside the field. Fantastic. The ice is in the plastic bag and they're holding that ice on that knee. That's, that's going to be beneficial. Definitely they're applying ice to that knee. A couple of problems I've got with that. One is often the plastic bags are, are very thin. So there's not a lot of insulation there. And there's something called an ice burn, which is uh, very serious. And those of you who have, who have seen, I don't know if anyone out there, let me know if you've seen an ice burn. Um, but it is actually a very serious thing and, and um, people will, will injure themselves, um, burning themselves with, uh, with, with ice. Um, 
Yes, yes. Thanks, Geordie. Thanks for the, the comment. Um, yes, there've been some many, many people have followed good advice from icing everything back in the in the day, and it certainly uh, certainly helps. Um, so the ice bag often is not insulated enough. So we're going to actually cause t damage to tissue. Think of frostbite as, a, as an example of that. Um, the second issue I've got with that is that people are only going to hold ice on there for so long and then they're going to let it go. It's going to be uncomfortable. They're not going to like it. They're going to want to get up and move or change positions and they'll, uh, they'll let, the, uh, let, let the ice go. So I'm just going to let, uh, let someone else in there. Yes, you are more than welcome, Grant, to join this, uh, to join this meeting. Um, so the, the ice will only last so long if someone's, uh, someone, someone's holding it. Um, the next picture I've got is someone, again, with ice on a knee. This time they've got the ice, the plastic ice bag, but someone's glad wrapped that onto their, onto their knee for them. And they might have a bit of glad wrap underneath that as well. That'll provide a bit of insulation. Um, but also, we have now glad wrapped that on, and that's a really common way of doing it. Pretty effective. Thankfully now that person has that ice attached to them. This is one of my main things, particularly working in junior sport. Uh, put that ice bag on them and attach it to them. If you attach it to them, they are more likely to leave that in place. Again, the ice is gonna be use, useless if they, uh, if they don't, uh, don't hold it on. Just had a question come in there. Uh, thanks, Bernice. Uh, what about a bag of peas? Bag of peas is super helpful. Um, they do work well, they mold nicely. Uh, but I'd put the bag of peas probably in the, in the category of, well, it's only gonna be as good as someone holding it on there for any length of time. Um, and potentially we can cause a bit of damage to the, to the tissues if, 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 it's, uh, if it stays too cold for too long. So but bag of peas in light of nothing else is, uh, is useful. Um, all right, so that's the second thing. Attach that ice to someone. Uh, as a physio, I will never let anyone walk away with a bag of ice in their hand when they should be icing their knee. I will attach it to them, I will strap it to them, I'll do whatever I've got to, uh, to get in there. G'day Mike, g'day Jack, g'day Remy, thanks for tuning in guys. Uh, any questions, shoot them through. We're talking today about heating versus icing for acute injuries. Mike Conway, you will know all of this esteemed physio uh, from Canada. Um, so attach the ice to yourself, make sure that we have some insulation or something around it that we're not gonna burn or create tissue damage. All right, the next one we'll get to. Now anyone, I'm looking at, there's something called a, a, a game ready, um, and it's not the only one out there. There are machines out there now, and those that can't see it, this person has, <clears throat> has a splint, it looks like, attached to their, attached to their knee, uh, and this, splint um, connects to, think of it like an esky. Okay, so we've got ice and water in this box. It is powered and it is, has a pump attached to it. So this machine is pumping ice water through the splint, sorry, I'm just going off that, attaching, uh, pumping ice water through that splint. So this thing is a phenomenal uh, device. It has a phenomenal price tag that goes with it. It's used a lot in professional sport. I'm told that in the NBA, the American basketball or NFL, they will have a room of these set up for every player um, at a cost of about $10,000 each. They're expensive. But this thing is, is it's amazing. It also provides compression. So that, that will pump up and compress at the same time, um, as well as pumping the ice and ice water through there. You can set the temperature that you want to keep it at. You can set it to cycle on and off. Um, so players will leave this on all night, and it will uh, it will come um, it will come in uh, it will kick in. Sorry, at a certain time for a certain duration. These things are, are phenomenal. They're actually used now in uh, a lot of the private hospitals are using um, are using them in um, um, so are using them. Sorry, I'm just reading a question. I'll get to that one. Thanks, Grant. How many times a day? I'll get to that one. Um, so. But they're used a lot in um, private hospitals for people that have an orthopedic surgery, knee reconstructions, knee re replacements. They're actually having a facility where their patients are taking these things and hiring them, taking them home. And we find that people turning up who have used these devices um, uh, are phenomenal. Their recovery is, um, is, is, is really good. And their swelling and pain is under, under control. So, um, so they're great. 
problem is they're not accessible for everyone and they can be a little bit impractical um, for, 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 for use. Gets me to my last picture, my favorite one. Um, so these things here, uh, there's a photo of someone with a, with a, a blue bag attached to them. And I'm gonna, I've got, here's one I prepared earlier, we might say if this was a, a cooking show. Um, these, are, I will give them a plug, there you go. Locker room, it's probably back to front. Um, if locker room's watching, then uh, I'll be excited on that. So this is, this is a, 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 an ice, ice bag. Why do I love this thing so much? Grant, if you're still watching, give me a thumbs up to tell me if you've used yours yet. Um, these things are super, super helpful. Um, sorry, I'm just talking to Grant. He, he got one from us. Uh, oh, there it is, big thumbs up. Well done, champion. So these, uh, Grant got one from us this morning in the, in, in the clinic. Right, why do I love these? And why do I think every single household should have, have one of these? Here's why. This is a rubber bag, okay? Rubber bag, it insulates against the skin. So this can go directly on the skin and we do not run the risk of tissue damage. We will not have frostbite from this, okay? It can sit on the skin nicely. Second reason, we screw the lid off, we put the ice inside the bag, okay? Nice rubber seal, this thing, as the ice melts, will not leak. We don't end up with a puddle on the floor, okay? Third reason, it comes with a neoprene wrap that our ice bag will fit inside and we can then attach that, depending on that's a shoulder strap or we can just attach that to ourselves. So it's fulfilling all my criteria of icing. Do no harm, don't burn the skin. Attach it so the athlete, the person, the patient, so you don't want to take that off, it will stay on. And the fact that we're wrapping on and we've got this neoprene material provides a little bit of compression as well. So we're controlling our swelling, our pain, our inflammation, all by a very, very simple, simple, um, simple tool. Okay, so every household I think should have one of these. We've got one in our household, all our family members have got one in their household, and they are, they're fantastic. All right, every young sports person should turn up to a, a sports field, and this should be in their kit bag, along with their mouth guard, headgear, boots, hockey stick, whatever, their tennis racket, whatever they take, have this. There's always ice somewhere. If someone gets injured, well, there you go. There is your management immediately, um, and that is, is the best way to go about it. So these things are really, really, really helpful. Um, if you want to know more about that, jump in, jump in, in get in contact with us, and we can, we can um, um, give you some more information about it. Cost effective too, at about $30, $35. I'm not sure exactly the price, um, and they're reusable, they will last forever, a long time. Ours in our household has been used a lot and it is, uh, it is still going still going strong. So the rubber ice bag, great invention, okay? Um, so applying ice, how we do it is important and we do it immediately, okay? One that I haven't mentioned there, and um, Grant, you'll like this one, is uh, the, ice, the ice bucket. I don't know if anyone uh, watching there has ever put their foot in an ice bucket, um, but it is incredibly effective. It can be incredibly uncomfortable. Here's the thing with the ice, ice bucket. Um, so, useful for foot and ankle injuries. So we often get people to use a bucket or a large esky, something that they can get their foot inside. So this cold submersion therapy is really, really helpful. Now this just, I'll answer a question that came through a minute ago regarding ice baths. This isn't an ice bath, okay? This is probably colder than an ice bath, all right? So this is good for acute injury management. We've got an injured ankle here. We have a fair bit of ice, a little bit of water. So we have a very thick ice mixture, ice slurry mixture, okay? So what is going to happen here is it's gonna be very painful, but we've got enough ice in there that that um, ankle is going to go numb. It's gonna take about four to five minutes and it will go numb. If we don't have enough ice in there, it won't actually go numb, 
it will just be staying in that painful zone. When we're icing something, it goes through a painful zone and then it will go numb, okay? Numb's okay, but we need to, if we're doing that, we need to have a stopwatch on and we need to control that time, 15, 20 minutes maximum, because if it's numb and we leave it in there too long, we are not gonna feel um, damage being done. So that can be something that is very, 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 very helpful. And I know a couple of those names that have popped up on, uh, on Facebook there, uh, guys that, um, sorry, uh, have been very good with icing, icing ankles. Rory, Max, Jordan, uh, Will um, have been very good with, with icing ankles with that. We have young athletes or people who are keen to get back to their sport as quickly as they can will set their alarm and they will wake up during the night, have their esky beside them, and they will plunge their foot into that for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so that can be very effective as well. Again, not as practical, um, but if people are very serious about getting onto that, it can be, uh, be very, very helpful. I'll just come back to a question I had here on our, on our chat. Um, and we had, is ice baths post-marathon in, in hot climates? So ice baths, um, thanks Mandy, ice baths are different. Ice baths are used for more general recovery. So here, I guess we're talking about acute injury management. Uh, ice baths um, can be helpful, uh, definitely in recovery, okay? And an ice bath will not have ice cubes necessarily floating in it, or it might have a few, but they will melt quite quickly. An ice bath is set, um, and uh, you can tell me that, an ice bath is set at around about, uh, 12, 12 degrees or so, so they're cold, but they're not. People aren't going to go numb in them. Okay, so um, so ice bath definitely helpful, but we're talking here today, I guess, about acute injury management, not just recovery. Okay. Um, question about ice: How many times per day should I ice my injury, and how long each time? So this is someone with uh, with an acute elbow injury, um, and that needs to be iced four to six times a day, and I would be spending 15 to 20 minutes icing that. That is a lot of time. That's a cumulative, we're talking a couple of hours potentially of icing that, okay? But that's an acute injury that will respond well to, will, will respond well to that. Particularly if you've got an ice bag that people go, well, that's so inconvenient. How can I sit there holding an ice pack on for that long? Don't hold an ice pack on. Get yourself something where you can wrap it on. You can still work, you can walk around, uh, with an elbow and have that ice still on there. So that's the other, other reason why we attach it there so we can get about our, uh, our day, which um, again, really helps with compliance, okay? So who would have thought that we could spend this long talking about how to apply ice? I, I could go on further, but I, I won't, <laughs> I won't. But definitely it's time and time again that application of ice is done poorly and not done for long enough. So the other question is, well, how many days should I do that for? If I roll my ankle today, I will be icing that four to six times a day for, for the next at least 72 hours, three days. Why 72 hours? Well, that's our acute inflammation process as humans lasts about that long. So we've got to make sure that those first three days we're really getting things under control. I'm not gonna ice it six times a day for six weeks, but in that initial stages, getting on top of that is really, really important. Okay, so it needs time and it needs effort to be put into getting that acute inflammation under control. All right, let's, let's, let's warm things up a little bit here, hey? Do you like that? We're gonna talk now about, uh, about moving from um, ice. Now let's talk about heat. Remember that was our topic today. Those of you just tuning in, do we ice or heat our acute injuries? G'day, Bron, you should be an expert at this. Um, so icing or heating. What do, what do we do? We've spoken about ice for acute inflammation. Let's talk about heat. When do we use heat? So think about it this way. Heat can be for an acute injury, but heat we find more helpful when there's an acute muscle spasm element to it. So these are the people that will come in and they have hurt their back, their neck, their middle of their back, and generally there's not an acute episode or a traumatic injury about it. For example, I bent over and I picked up a pen off the floor and my, I got sharp back pain. Now generally, we are going to be looking at 
the muscle spasm causing a lot of this pain. I look to my right and I got a sharp pain in my neck. Again, generally we'll have a, a real muscle spasm element over it. Or I coughed or I sneezed and I got a sharp pain in the middle of my back. Generally a muscle spasm element to it. Okay? Or I was drying my hair and I flicked my hair and I got a really sharp neck pain. Got a muscle spasm. So heat we use when we, uh, when we have a lot of muscle, muscle spasm. So someone might have got a severe cramp or they might have had uh, muscle tightness and spasm, so heat is really, really helpful. Okay? So generally to do with the spine, unless it's a direct blow or an injury that happened when I went for a tackle and I got a really sharp pain in my neck, maybe we're gonna ice that. But unless it's a direct blow or a traumatic injury, then with the spine particular, we're probably gonna put heat on it, to be honest. Okay, so the, the age-old question um, around heating or icing is that now we're talking in terms of muscle spasm, we're talking heat. How do I apply heat? Okay, picture of hot water bottles there. They scare me. Let's, I'm frightened of hot water bottles. I've seen four patients I could think of over the last 15 years who have severely burnt themselves using a hot water bottle. Okay, so they put boiling water into it, they then sat on it, lay on it, put pressure on it, it leaked because it had perished, because it was rubber, um, and, and they have burnt themselves. So they do frighten me a little bit. The best things that we find um, are useful are these heat, heat bags. Heat wheats, wheat bag, whatever you want to call it, the things you put in the microwave and heat them up. They've got a medical grade wheat inside a, a calico bag, and they are super, super helpful for heating. You can lie on them, put them on top of you, sit on them, lean against them, do whatever, and they mould really, really nicely to you. So a wheat bag is the best way to apply heat. Okay, we can use heat rubs, heat creams, they are fine as well, but we find that the heat pack is really, really helpful. Okay, again, went to uni for a long time to tell you put a heat pack on it. But the muscle stiffness and spasm is really helpful, and if you've visited us at PhysioFit, you will have been given exercises to do, probably with a heat pack underneath you if you've had back pain. The one picture, I've got a picture with a lady lying with the heat pack on top of her. Um, not a massive fan of that, to be honest. I'd rather people using the heat pack but doing some exercises at the same time um, as, as they, we spoke about that last week in terms of some knee rocking exercises. Um, so in terms of the heat pack, we're better off trying to be a little bit active if we can at the same time while we've got the heat on. Okay, but our heat packs are super important, super helpful with muscle spasm. Okay, so muscle spasm responds really well to heat. Brings me to a question. Um, I had one come in earlier today regarding our lumbar stretches. So this is going back from something we spoke about last week. Mary asked me that question um, about her knee rocks. Um, is my torso allowed to move during my knee rocks? Yes, it is, Mary, your torso can move, that's fine. Um, and so that will allow you to go a little bit further and you will get a little bit more of a stretch. So torso moving is okay. You don't have to be rigid through your torso. That will move, that's fine. I hope that helps with that question. Another question regarding um, some acute muscle spasm by the sounds of it. Um, Dennis has, uh, has some, some muscle spasm in his back. Um, he's been doing lots of exercise classes in the middle part of his back. Dennis, that seems to me more like muscle spasm. I would be tending to put heat on that rather than ice. Again, unless you were hit by a flying ping pong ball um, or something of the sort, then I would tend to, use, uh, I'll tend to use heat. So grab your heat pack, put some heat on that. Um, that would be uh, probably more helpful because it's spine related and it's not from an acute traumatic injury. It's probably accumulation of, of the past few weeks of, of, of exercise. Um, so heat wheat bags are the best, no doubt about it. There's lots of great, great ones around. I've just had a message come through. Let me have a look there uh, on our chat. Um, there you go, heatweek.com.au. Um, is a is a is a, a heat heat pack company based on the Gold Coast. 
Okay, so if you want that want that link, I'm happy if people send that through, uh, question through, we can and put that up there. Uh, actually, Grant, why don't you pop that up there in? Um, I'll copy that. Let's see if I can do that. Always happy to support a local business, particularly when it's. Uh, oh, what have I done? Have I done that right? There you go. Oh no, I've gone just back to you, Grant. Here we go. I'll message everyone that. There you go, everyone. There you go, heatweek.com.au. Ian Pye, if you're listening, uh, no worries. Happy to support a local business, particularly someone who was fine a rugby player as you were. Or still are, probably. Not as good as your kids. Uh, all right, so heat versus ice. Those first few days, so let's, let's start to wrap things up here. Um, so those first few days, first 72 hours, really important with our acute injury management. Ice for inflammation and swelling, and generally that will occur from a acute traumatic injury. Rolled my ankle, twisted my knee, got hit with something, hit with a hockey stick, hit with something, um, that ice is going to be really, really helpful for that. How you apply the ice, make sure you're not gonna burn your skin and make sure that it's attached to you and that you do that regularly, four to six times a day in the initial three days, 15 to 20 minutes. Depending on the area, ankles, feet, you might use an ice bucket, but be careful with that um, about how we go about that and really make sure you've got a, a stopwatch on so you can keep an eye on that time. Heat is more for reducing muscle spasm. Generally around the spine, um, muscle spasm is, uh, is going to be the, the, uh, one of the main complaints. Um, so working on that, reducing that spasm with heat is really, really um, helpful, okay? And apply heat using a heat pack, a heat pack, sorry, is, is the best way to apply that, that heat um, in our, in our ex, um, opinion and experience. Watch out for hot water bottles, just be careful, don't burn yourself, please. Okay, um, questions, let me look at my list. Yes, they've been answered. Um, any other questions, feel free to shoot them, uh, shoot them through while I wrap things up here or get in contact with us. Um, our online classes are continuing. Uh, we certainly um, have been offering plenty in terms of our online classes. Uh, we've had people getting great benefit from that, which is, uh, which is fantastic. We will continue to offer those online classes. Um, we've certainly seen, as have most people, in terms of, uh, in terms of probably a little bit more confidence back in the general community. Um, we're starting to uh, field a few more calls of people coming into the clinic, which is great. Um, face to face is our best way of doing things, but in lieu of that, our online, online classes or online physiotherapy consults are important. Remember, we cannot offer on classes in the physio clinic at the moment, um, so online is the best bet. We are offering one-on-one -on -one classes. People can come and use our gym facility one-on-one uh, -on -one with their physio or our Pilates reformers. Um, timetable next week. We won't offer as many classes next week. We are, um, my physios are worn out, <laughs> and as demand increases in our clinic, we are, um, we are finding that our time um, has been maximised with our, our physio patients, but we are still committed to offering our online classes. That's a draft timetable. I will email out the timetable for next week, but again, we have the variety on offer. Um, our Ask the Physio session will be on next week. Make sure you bring a friend, make sure you uh, let, let people know, make sure you get in contact with us. If you have questions relating to the topic that we are talking about that week or other topic, I'm happy to cover off on, uh, on, on, what, we, um, on what, we, um, what, what you need, what questions you have. Don't think you've just got to contact us. We've had people contact us after the fact or message us or email us. Um, please get in contact with us. We are more than happy to answer questions regarding uh, your physiotherapy needs. Thank you very much for tuning in again this afternoon. Great to see those uh, questions coming through. Um, and I look forward to catching up with you at the same time next week. And keep an eye out on email on our Facebook, Instagram pages for our online classes. Remember, we are still open in the clinic. Definitely, we are treating people in the clinic. We've been fortunate enough to be able to do that right through, uh, right through this, uh, these times. Um, and we're absolutely enjoying helping everyone uh, as much as we can. Um, and 
being creative around our online uh, classes and online consultations for those that can't make it into the clinic. So thank you very much again for your support. Thanks for tuning in again. Thanks for spreading the word about what we're trying to, trying to achieve here. Um, and we really appreciate that. And we will uh, see you soon online or in the clinic. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.